The only way we can increase consumption of this product is if it's available at all times of the year. We don't have that hail risk or that storm risk that you would have if you had it growing outside. It'll be the only way to go in the future. Daniel Scarvo's vegetable growing business is based in Bundaberg and the only reason he's still in the district is because of this. His new $3 million Cravo house. The Canadian designed structure with retractable roof panels and walls covers 4.3 hectares of tomatoes and capsicums. Before the Cravo house went in and up, the Scarvos planned to get out of Bundaberg after the region was walloped by bad weather five years in a row. We were out of the business. We'd lost three consecutive Roma crops in a row. Um, our yield numbers were pathetic and, and everything we put in that box, you know, you had to hope for a market that was high enough for a return to be able to plant your next crop. And fighting disease and, and increased spray rotations and, and insects and it was just it's too much work. And so if you look at a couple of these, you know, these trusses, they're just For local you know, agronomist Jack Milbank, it was heartbreaking to watch so many clients suffer year after year. Many of the growers, particularly in this area, just went out of tomatoes and planted macadamias. Who wouldn't rather just have a nice sane existence with you know the macadamia production as opposed to the high levels of stress market volatility and then millions of dollars exposed to the elements that could be wiped out at any time the romas are very susceptible to weather to weather marking and obviously that messes with the cosmetic look of the product so we were looking for answers Before leaving Bundaberg though, Daniel Scarvo tried one last way to stay. He flew to Mexico to see a Cravo house. The pitch was he could produce glasshouse quality tomatoes without the glasshouse price. Designed in Canada 40 years ago, Cravo was originally for small high value operations like nurseries. But a design change and new materials recently made them affordable for large-scale fruit and vegetable growers. Crop protection can now be measured in hectares, not square metres. The bill for 4.3 hectares of crop insurance, $3 million. Me and my director had a quick conversation. Uh, we walked out of the structure. We walked back into the structure. We looked at each other and we both nodded and pretty much said, this is the thing we need to do. Those who thought the multi-million dollar spend crazy saw its worth in spectacular fashion in October 2015. The day before its official opening, Bundaberg was hit by the worst storm in 50 years. We had four inches of rain in 20 minutes. We had over 100 kilometre winds and we had a hailstorm at night, which is very rare. So our field crops were absolutely decimated. We lost practically you know, 60% uh, of our field production in one hit in 15 minutes. Uh, but the house did exactly what it was built to do. It shut up shop and it protected itself. Uh, and we were lucky enough to still have aroma crop uh, throughout the next three or four months. Each producer programs the house for their particular crop and climate. Weather sensors activate motors to fully or partially close the roof or walls. Closed, crops are protected from heat, rain, hail and frost. Open, sun and rain is let in, heat can escape and airflow increased. Once bad weather is detected, the polyethylene roof can close in two and a half minutes. Josh, my farm manager, can walk away at five o'clock and, and look at this place and go, okay, worst case scenario, we're not going to get wiped out. You know, best case scenario, we're not going to get touched at all, which two weeks ago, um, there was a weather event again, uh, all over Queensland, 
and the system did what it was supposed to do and protected the crop. Both the quality and yield of the tomatoes has exceeded expectations. I've never seen size like this at this height, especially, you know, traditionally a field grown product. I mean, we still have a fruit set up here, so that'll actually go even higher. So that, it's quite, quite impressive for a traditional trellis. Two weeks before Landline visited, bad weather caused a field grown tomato shortage in Queensland and prices tripled, leaving the unaffected Scarvos able to command top dollar in the market. Weather marking is one of the big things that has a huge impact on the price, so little rub marks on the, on the tomatoes and so um, yesterday with the, the pick, 97% first grade fruit pack up. We're shooting for 40,000 cases for the next crop, which will be close to double what we get in the field. So realistically, we'd be getting 70 to 80 tonnes that we'd be working on in the field. We're going for 130 tonnes, so it's a significant increase in yield. Jack Milbank says tomatoes grown this way have the taste and resilience of slower growing field grown fruit and the near perfect appearance of glasshouse hydroponic ones. As a hybrid system where you can control the elements as you would in a greenhouse, but still produce in the ground, and you know, we use compost, all the traditional growing media that you would use in an outdoor natural growing system to produce a full bodied, full flavoured tomato, but with the benefit of the greenhouse protective system, you know, controlling the climate. There have been some unexpected but welcome results, including a reduction in spraying, a 70% drop in water use, and the bees stayed. We thought there was going to be an issue that they wouldn't want to come into the structure, they'd stay out in the field. But I just think it's a good, natural, protected environment, and uh, I think they're happy. Protecting the crop means that for the first time, this operation is able to meet its commitments to national retailers. It's not about money, it's about keeping your customer happy and the only way we can increase consumption of this product is if it's available, a higher standard at all times of the year and that's what we're really trying to achieve. The plan is to quadruple field coverage here by 2021. I think this is going to be a watershed in the high value horticultural market in that suddenly this is not a cost, this is a necessary investment. Is this exciting to be involved? To be honest, it, it's reinvigorated my passion for high value horticulture. It, you know, I suppose it was quite depressing after a few years of just people going out of business and such a fine line in hort as to who's going to make money and not. And this has been a breath of fresh air for me personally to just to be involved with something that's, you know, it's really forward thinking, you know, it's innovative and it allows you to apply your skills and actually make a difference. The first Cravos were installed in Queensland. Because we're not putting in the heating system, these guys are able to stay in the field. Um, we're seeing probably uh, a reduction in, in the capital infrastructure to anywhere to one fifth of, to, to half of the cost of a high-tech glasshouse. Bede Miller says they're now spreading south as a range of horticultural operations adopt what's called protected agriculture. The vine crops in the warmer climates, tomatoes, cucumbers, capsicums, we've actually seen a lot of interest from the berry and cherry market where a lot of conventional methods haven't allowed them to hit their target windows. So we're seeing quite a lot of interest from the southern markets, uh, Tasmania, um, Victoria, Perth, um, markets like that. In Griffith, a decade of low wine grape prices spurred young couple Grace Rabato and Danny Monteleone to invest several million dollars in a Cravo house. Two hectares of grapes went to make way for the 1.2 hectare house, which can hold 210,000 plants. 
Grace Robato says while the investment is big, the upsides are too, with guaranteed consistent yield and quality year round. Open for just a month, she says it passed its first test a fortnight ago, when temperatures hit the mid 40s for several days. The climate control system protected the plants. When fully operational, 52,000 fancy lettuce and herb plants will be harvested each week. With a new processing facility next door, produce can be harvested, packed and delivered to Sydney in 24 hours. And there are expansion plans. This is just stage one. While the numbers add up for higher value crops, producers of lower value crops are beginning to see a role for the houses as well. Koala Farms at Gatton in southeast Queensland grows half a million lettuce a week, as well as broccoli and cauliflower. What are the climate risks of having a vegetable operation here? Well, the no-brainers hail. We've had uh, last year outside we had three hailstorms in one season. That was a bit hard to take. Obviously it didn't affect our nursery but hail's the big one. Storm damage, wind damage and uh, heat. Heat can also be bad. Yeah, Ro, what do you reckon about this germ? That looks pretty good. It's nearly a full germ. They used to buy seedlings from nurseries to plant out in the paddocks. Now they grow their own in their new protected nursery. We hold about $200,000 worth of plants in here at any one time. So the roof adds a fair bit of value. You know, we don't have that hail risk or that storm risk that you would have if you had it growing outside. It creates a very even crop out in the paddock and it provides consistency with your product at the end. So how they start has a big determination on what you finish with. This isn't cheap. What made you invest? We see a good future in the vegetable industry and we've been around for generations. We want to be around for generations to come. So we saw it as a key opportunity for us to reduce some cost and add some value through quality. Anthony Statz says it's been like Disneyland with curious producers asking for a tour. Oh, look, the weather's getting more and more unpredictable and the value of the crops getting higher and higher so there's no doubt that protective cropping will become more and more common in the future, yeah. Koala farms won't cover whole paddocks as the profits just aren't there. For higher value crops though, it is worth it. In Tasmania, where cherry growers battle many weather enemies, the first retractable roof house is going in. Weather-wise, the lead up to harvest is a high risk period, which is frustrating as the Tasmanians have the lucrative Chinese New Year gift market to themselves. But only if the weather gods play nice and they can get their crop off. Our importers rely very heavily on us being able to supply every year. They pre-sell a lot of product and so getting rain right on the death knock of harvest and ruining our crop is just devastating. It's bad for our reputation, it lets everybody down and that's why protective cropping is going to be an essential thing for the future. To extend the picking season and spread their geographical risk, Reed Fruits is planting out a new orchard at Jericho, an hour north of Hobart. At 450 metres above sea level, it's higher and further inland than any of the Reed's other farms. It will be windier and frostier and snow is a possibility, so four hectares is being covered. Half the $2.5 million price tag is being met by a Commonwealth Government grant. The Cravo could nearly pay for itself in a year. Certainly in two years of poor crops we could get our money back. But year on year we're going to get improved packouts. So 
that's going to contribute to the payment that it's repaying us every year. Tim Reid believes he's one of the first commercial cherry growers in the world to use the technology and predicts it will be a game changer for Australian horticulture. I think it takes the risk out of climate change and it'll open the opportunity to produce some new crops in places where they haven't been produced before. So this is the way the world is going to go. It's uh, a really exciting new innovation and I'm particularly excited about the ability to open and close the roof so quickly, all automatically. The houses which are sent out from Canada are like an IKEA pack and they go up quickly. Just like a Meccano set, one grower told me, all you need are local shed builders to do the job. What do you think of these, Andrew? They look alright, the trees? Yeah, they've come up well. While he'd like to, there are no plans to cover all their cherry plantings, as it's just too expensive. It all comes at a high cost, and we hope in the future, with more and more of it going into uh, being used, the price will come down. I think it's going to spread everywhere and in time it'll be the only way to go in the future.